Shalom. Today we're going to cover another pair of letters and the words that are associated with them. If you need a font chart, the link will be below. The two letters we're going to cover today are Kuf and Sadi, and they make a word by themselves, Ketz, which means the end of something or the boundary of something. We see in Genesis 4.3, in the process of time, sometimes we talk about it at the end of time or at the end of that period of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto Jehovah. Obviously, it wasn't the end of time, but it was the end of a period of time. Genesis 8, 6. And it came to pass at the end of 40 days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made. In 2 Samuel 15:7. We see, and it came to pass after 40 years, at the end of 40 years, that Absalom said unto the king, I pray you, let me go and pay my vow, which I have vowed unto Jehovah in Hebron. Jeremiah 15:26. Come against her from the utmost border, from the edge, open her storehouses, cast her up as heaps, and destroy her utterly. Let nothing of her be left. A related word and also a noun, katse, meaning edge. Genesis 8, 3. And the waters were returned from off the earth continually. And after the end or the edge of the 150 days, the waters were abated. Exodus sixteen thirty five, And the children of Israel did eat manna 40 years until they came to a land inhabited. They did eat manna until they came to the borders, the edge of the land of Canaan. And we have this associated verb, katsa, which means to cut or to cut off. In Leviticus 14, 41, And he shall cause the house to be scraped within round about, and they shall pour out the dust that they scrape off without the city into an unclean place. Talking about if you have a mildew infestation in your house comparable to leprosy. So we want to cut that part off. In 2 Kings 10, 32, in those days, Jehovah began to cut Israel short, and Chazael smote them in all the coasts of Israel. The corresponding geminate verb, where we have the same letter twice at the end, katsatz, also means to cut off. Judges 1 6. But to Adoni Bezek fled, and they pursued after him and, and caught him, and cut off his thumbs and his great toes. Jeremiah 49 32. And their camels shall be a booty, and the multitude of their cattle a spoil. And I will scatter into all the winds of them that are in the utmost corners, the very ends. And I will bring their calamity from all sides thereof, says Jehovah. Numbers 11.1 1. And when the people complained, it displeased Jehovah, and Jehovah heard it. And his anger was kindled, and the fire of Jehovah burned among them, and consumed them that were in the utmost parts of the camp. The the place where the camp is cut off, it's finished. Psalm nineteen four. Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them he set a tabernacle for the sun. So these words are all very similar, and we can see that they have the same letters. The word for thorn, also from this root, cuts. And why is that? Because the end of the thorn is the thing that's important about the thorn. Genesis 3.18, thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. Jeremiah 4.3, and thus says Jehovah to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, break up your fallow ground and sow not among thorns. We know that seed that is sown among thorns does not produce. Another word associated with these two letters is kayetz, which means summer, and summer is the end of the harvest season. Genesis 8:22 While the earth remains seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease Jeremiah 8:20 The harvest is past the summer is ended and we are not saved Amos 8:1 Thus has the Lord Jehovah showed unto me behold a basket of summer fruit There is no word for fruit in this verse the only word there is summer but you can't have a basket of summer, you have a basket of summer fruit. Related to these words is the word katsar, which is the action either of making something short or reaping something, in which case you shorten the plant to take in the harvest. Leviticus 19.9, and when you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not wholly reap the corners of your field, neither shall you gather the gleanings of your harvest. Judges 10.16, 
And they put away the strange gods from among them and served Jehovah. And his soul was grieved for the misery of Israel. We talk about having a short temper, about feeling so badly. Psalm 89:45. The days of his youth you have shortened. You have covered him with shame. The noun for the word harvest is katsir, Genesis 8:22. While the earth remains seed time and harvest. We talked about this in the summer and cold and heat and summer, kayets and winter and night and day shall not cease. We know from the story of Ruth 1.22 and Naomi returned and Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law with her, which returned out of the country of Moab and they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of the barley harvest. Another interesting word which is related is yakats, which means to waken. In other words, your sleep is cut off. Genesis 9.24, And Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. Genesis 28.16, And Jacob awaked out of his sleep, and he said, Surely Jehovah is in this place, and I knew it not. Judges 16.20, And she said, The Philistines be upon you, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times and shake myself. And he did not know that Yehovah was departed from him. So there are other words for waking up, for rising up, for getting up. This indicates that the person who is waking up is waking up to a revelation or a sudden understanding that they didn't have. So the idea of cutting something off, cutting sleep off, is involved in this verb. Now a friend was studying Ruth and read in a book about this, Kitsatsa, I had never heard of it, but it is a Talmudic reference, and it has to do with a ceremony which breaks off an unsuitable marriage or the sale of land to a Gentile. Of course, it's spoken about in Ruth, where the nearest of kin does not want to marry Ruth because he is afraid of putting his heritage in jeopardy, and that's how Boaz winds up with her. Boaz was not the nearest of kin, but the first guy turned down his option. Mostly in Tomba, when it talks about this katsatsa ceremony, there is involved a barrel of fruit and they break it open. And most of the reference is how old of a person can be a witness. Even a child can be a witness of this ceremony and say, yes, whatever they're breaking is broken. But it does mention the removal of the shoe. Until next time, Tasimita Enayim al Keep your eye on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.